episode 18 of No One Asked Us, Craig Show. I'm Logan Lee. We have uh, a few things to talk about this week. We are recording this. It is Monday evening, about 5.30 Eastern Time, 4.30 Central, and uh, we'll have this show up for you on Tuesday. Craig, before we get started, uh, you celebrated your first Father's Day as a dog dad. Uh, did you actually celebrate? <laughs> did Onyx give you a gift? Um, I would like to know how how this went down because I know some some dog dads they they recognize it as a special holiday. So I just I want to know where you sit on the matter. No, we didn't do anything. Oh, mm, okay. um, I've kind of been an adopt a, adoptive dog dad for the last couple of years. Well, that's true. That is true. <laughs> but yeah, that is first true. first Father's Day for Onyx. Um, but yeah, I did. He actually we got him a cookie, a dog oh. cookie. So he got a gift. Wow. But I didn't get anything. The roles are reversed. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. Um, that's great. Well, happy belated Father's Day out there to all the dads, including my own, who I'm sure will listen to this at some point this week. Um, as I said, a few things we need to talk about uh, on the show um, this week, a lot of it pertaining to probably uh, we'll stick with Illinois sports, I think, probably to, to start off this show. The big announcement today um, coming from the Supreme Court um, in terms of the NCAA. We'll get to that. I want to start with um, the Josh Whitman media uh, time he had last week where he shared his state of the program, state of the whatever address last week. Um, covered a lot, um, you know, across the board in terms of all the athletic programs and uh, spent a lot of time talking about, uh, you know, the situation post post pandemic and, you know, how this how the year went athletically with with the COVID situation you know the they had zero um zero events were were canceled or whatever yeah um which is which is terrific he talked about a lot of different things during that session talked about men's the men's basketball season and uh early results from you know Bielman football and name image and likeness and gambling and touched on the hockey situation not a lot of surprising things in there if you want to go find that information it's all um very readily available to you uh, but the few things that i wanted to touch on i think the biggest things um well the one was the financial the financial yeah. um outcome from from the year with with covid without fans and mm -hmm. without attendance and all this stuff uh i think the number he gave was an estimated between 12 and 18 million dollars um, that was lost. Yeah. Um, can't really say that's a surprise uh, to anybody. You had all these events, but you had nobody in the in the stands to watch them. So uh, yeah, I mean, I know TV money is obviously where a lot of it comes from, and they still got that. But uh, you know, that's that's still a good chunk of a good chunk of change. Mm -hmm. um, now he did say after that that you know there's a plan in place to recover the money, and every every athletic department in the country is going through the same thing, just like. Yeah most businesses in the world this isn't new this isn't should be a surprise but it, it's it's at least something of note that josh did mention um during that session he had uh, and then the other thing before we go um before we you know switch topics or whatever he did talk about the men's basketball situation which is something we continue to talk about um he said he was happy with you know with Chester Frazier joining the staff and he was happy for Jeff Alexander to you know get get a you know promotion in the role um, then regarding the third coaching vacancy, I just want to, just want to bring this up. He's told fans, and I believe he was talking to us directly. Um, <laughs> he told fans quote to just relax. Um, so he must be talking about the fans and the podcasters, uh, that every week want to know what the hell's going on. Uh, and then he simply said that he said that it is simply a timing issue, um, in regards to the coach. So, I will now turn this over to you, Craig Show. Um, per the text I sent you the other night, is there any chance that this job does not belong to Brian Randall at this point? I, I'm just saying, like, I just, I don't, I don't know that. What else makes sense to me, to you? Anything? I don't, I don't know. I, I just don't see the appeal of Brian Randall leaving the Phoenix Suns, who are in the conference finals of the Western conference to come be a college coach and be out on the recruiting trail all the time. I, it just, it doesn't line up. I don't disagree. I will say that I think that there are some people just, they just want to be in the college game. Yeah. Um, you know, it could potentially be a, a, a better track to something. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I think that college assistants sometimes um, have a faster route to to move up potentially, um, more so than maybe assistant coaches do at the NBA. Yeah. Um, I don't know. And again, I'm this is all just speculation, but just going off of what he said. Um, telling fans to just relax and that it's quote a simply a timing issue i I got nothing i got nothing i mean that's just that's i have no i have no other ideas like what what else what if it's doc rivers well doc rivers is done now so he he can doc rivers to be a third (laughs) assistant coach at the university of illinois sure Yeah. yeah i mean it could be any number of uh i i any nba coaches i guess i I mean, we're, we're focused in on the Brian Randall thing because he is an assistant coach in the NBA and he is a former U of I basketball player. So like yeah. that, that, and he's still coaching. So um, he's a part of your Phoenix Suns that are um, making their way towards, towards the finals. So um, I don't know. That's kind of the, the big takeaway from, from Josh's uh, state of the program, state of the whatever department um address that he had last week did you um you know were there any other things that he talked about that you wanted to bring up that you thought that were of note um with what he said or you know what were your general thoughts from from some of that um for for me coming from wcia where i got to go to this little round table that he does every year it was one of the coolest things i think i've ever been a part of because i don't know how many power five ad's do this like every summer josh does this he invites all the media and i don't i'm assuming they were all in the same room this year um i I think i saw a bunch of the media people tweeting about how it felt normal but i mean it 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 was literally a round table josh would sit in one chair and there would be 20 to 30 media just in a comp on a sitting at a conference table just surrounding him and he would open up. I think I saw Jeremy Werner say his opening statement was like an hour. Just that he just he just went down his list of stuff that he knew people would want to talk about. And then he would go around the table and just everyone would just ask a question. So first of all, I think it's really cool of Josh to do this because I don't think many division one athletic directors give the media the access that Josh does with this event here. And it's a good um, it's a good time to have it. You know, all the sports are done. It's kind of like a, a summer content thing and, and TV, you know, when you have an hour long round table, now they're not allowed to record anything in the conference room, but afterwards Josh will do quick one-on-one interviews with everyone. So it gave content. So I just want to give props to Josh for doing it first. Cause it was really cool. Always enjoyed going and, and talking to Josh at this event. Enjoy talking to Josh anytime. He's just a smart dude and, and really down to earth and, and a good guy, but uh, just a, a lot of the stuff that you said, um, 175 positive tests in the athletic department, uh, 122 student athletes, 53 staff. I think there's like 580 athletes, student athletes. So that's quite a few positives among the students. Um, but 75% of the student athletes are vaccinated right now. 90% of the staff. Interesting with that though, because just Monday, the university said that for students to come back in the fall, which campus is going to be open in the fall, but for students to come back, they're requiring students to get the vaccine now. Yeah. So I miss that has to mean student athletes because they are students. So if a student athlete wants to play this fall, they're going to have to get the vaccine. And yeah. he, he made it a point in the round table last week to say, we are not forcing, we are giving the athletes their choice. Well, the university is now forcing them to get the vaccine. So I don't know that that would stop anyone from playing it. Do, do you think it could? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to think. I don't I, like, I don't, I don't, know. I don't like the fact that they're forcing them to get I it. I think it should be your choice. I agree. Um, I've tried to stay away from this topic for a while, uh, just in my personal life and on social media and on this show, I've even muted certain words to start with the letter V on Twitter, just cause I'm tired of hearing about it. Um, Sorry to bring it up. No, it's fine. I do think it's something that does, we do need to talk about. Um, I agree with you. I don't think that the university should require it. Yeah. Um, whatever yours or my stance on it as individuals with that, regardless, I don't think that should be a requirement. 
Um, you asked, do I think it will deter anyone from actually playing? Maybe. I mean, yeah. with the, I mean, would it shock me if there's some walk on swimmer or something like no that wouldn't shock me i i don't yeah. think it'll have much of an effect i do think um most if not all will will get it so i don't think it'll be a huge issue yeah. um but i i don't love that um that they're requiring it personally but yeah you know that's their decision that's their choice i'm sure they're not going to be the only university that's doing that so yeah. um you know, it is what it is. And I, I don't think yeah. it will have a huge um, effect on, you know, especially the major sports. Um, but I mean, we've seen it at the professional level. I mean, it's been very public information the last few weeks, um, you know, that certain people ha haven't got it for whatever their reason. So, you know, some people are choosing not to do it and that's their choice. So yeah. for a university to require it um, for their students, that aren't athletes sure that's fine they can do it online you can't play basketball online i mean you yeah. can but not with what they're doing so uh <laughs> it, they can't be on the esports team so um i don't know there's a fine line there i think and i'm just not totally sure what the right solution there is yeah um but that's kind of that's kind of where i stand yeah i agree um the the net losses 12 to 18 million the early projection and i don't know if you mentioned this the early projection that women had was they could lose 40 million because of right. this so less than half of that yeah. uh, very very positive uh, aspect in that and the biggest thing i thought of and i thought of this throughout the season as the season progressed it's like all right illinois hasn't had to cancel anything yet illinois hasn't had to cancel anything yet and it never came illinois had zero cancellations because of an illinois positive yeah. And I had the idea and I wanted to do it for so long. And then just, I just kept putting it off and putting it off and figured it would probably be a lot of work, but I wanted to go through at least all the power conferences, maybe all of like the FC or FBS. I did it again, FBS um, level and just see how many schools had to cancel something because of a positive test. I don't think it would, I, I think Illinois would be one of the few that didn't have to cancel any because of their own positive. Oh, I'm sure. Because I'm I sure. feel like everyone had to, had an outbreak at least at some point. And yeah. Josh credited that to the saliva test that U of I developed. Because if you remember right, Brandon Peters missed some games because the saliva test caught it, but the Big Ten didn't. Right. So this saliva test that U of I developed and finally got, I think, I don't know how, how far-fetching it is now, but this test that we got here in Champaign was, was very successful in, in um, picking up on the virus days before any other test. So kudos to U of I for that and not having to cancel anything. I thought that was pretty big coming out of this round table. And that was, that was that the same test that they were doing all across university. Yeah. So that's the same one you were doing yeah. on a regular yeah, basis. Was, yeah. It was a campus one. Yeah. Yep. It yeah. was, um, that he, he gave major props to that for catching um, a lot of what could have been worse problems before yeah. they got to him. Um, he did talk a little hockey and basically, yeah. said, basically said it's on pause. Right. Um, they were so close to announcing it. And then this happened. Um, it sounded like he was just, um, he was just starting to, to restart those conversations with all the donors to see, right. Hey, are you still interested? Can we still get this done? I still think it happens, but it now where it could have been at the end of this year, it's probably like 2022, 2023. Yeah. Like it, it's a year, years away. Right. I had down the, the relax on the third. And anytime I see that, I just <laughs> think of Aaron Rodgers. It wasn't Aaron Rodgers a couple of years ago that like, yeah. R E L <laughs> like just, just relax. Yep. Um, we talked about that enough. And he also did say um, Underwood's on pace for an extension and he wants yep. to have, right. Wants to have conversations with Brad pretty soon, but obviously Brad's been kind of busy trying to fill that spot and out on the recruiting trail and all that stuff. So those are the things that I had written down. Um, nothing really earth shattering, which I didn't know that I expected anything earth shattering or not, No, but 
but a lot of information there. They were probably like, we were always in there for like three hours. Right. No, there wasn't a lot of earth shattering things. I, I wanted to mention you, you brought up the hockey thing, which um, that's kind of an obvious thing that was probably going to be on hold. Um, you know, when the whole world shut down for 14 months. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm just, I'm excited for Illinois fans in central Illinois to have hockey. Yeah. Um, I've never been a big hockey person, but um, Notre Dame hockey games up here are a blast. Yeah. Like they are a fun, like, it's just a fun time. Yeah. Um, and just to be able to have that at the big 10 level, um, in Champaign is going to be, it's going to be phenomenal and very excited for that to happen. Cause I'm sure that there's plenty of our listeners or viewers that aren't huge hockey people either, just because yeah. they're really, I mean, yes, there's blues and Blackhawks, but growing up in central Illinois, it just wasn't a thing. So right. at least for me and, you know, um, he did say too, said, sorry, he did say, no, um, not. I forgot which article it was and let's, I'm going to pub this out there. Alina inquire has all this stuff. WCIA has stories with more in depth stuff. News Gazette, Chicago Tribune, Shannon Ryan did a story. So go to, go get the in depth stuff from them. This is just us kind of spitballing from other right. stuff we saw for the good stuff and the good reporting go to all those those guys that get paid to do it and, and consume their content. One of them had a, had a quote that said Whitman, he said, he said something like he didn't want to jump the gun, but he thinks hockey could be the third revenue sport, like below men's basketball no, and football. No, I would, I would think I, so. Hockey could, could slot in there at number three as far as uh, revenue I, share. I think Illinois. it could. I really do. I think it's become a big enough thing um especially if the if you have a nice nice arena for it and everything i yeah. wouldn't it wouldn't shock me at all yep. um it's not that it's not like women's basketball has had a lot of success lately so you know it'd be one thing if that was a little different but um yeah i i would agree i would think that probably would fit in there nicely so yeah. um and i kind of brushed on it earlier he also you know he talked about the name image and likeness he also talked about I read something he mentioned that he he is not in support of of gambling on college athletics, um, which I just thought that was it was of note. I I don't hate his argument, but um, I was just using that basically as a transition into the Supreme Court thing, yeah. Um, which which was the big news that came out this morning um, that the Supreme the U.S. Supreme Court um, basically they what they said was that the ncaa is violating um the antitrust law that's by placing limits on education related benefits that the schools can provide so as you mentioned there's a lot of other people that do cover a lot of the more in-depth things about this so if this is something that is of interest to you go out there and read that stuff but essentially what this means is that when it comes to education related things such as laptops, musical instruments, things that would be needed for school that the NCAA has been banning the schools from providing because of their amateurism, the U.S. Supreme Court finally said that's, you can't do that. So that's just another, it's just another tally mark on this, this whole thing. Eventually this, this house of cards is eventually going to fall. Yeah. And what has the NCAA has with has held up this whole charade for the last however many years about this amateurism um, and everything. But now with name, image and likeness making its way across the country and with this ruling straight from the U.S. Supreme Court, um, eventually this is going to this is going to collapse and, and the NCAA is really going to have to change everything about how they do um how they govern these things i'm not saying that the ncaa is is ran poorly or doing a poor job for some of this stuff i'm just saying that eventually it's it's finally catching up to them um and that was that was the big news that came out today what was oh. your thoughts on that is the ncaa going to be around in five years <laughs> i think about this quite often <laughs> um <laughs> I don't know. I think the answer to that question is yes. Yeah, I do too. I do. But I think it'll look different. Yeah. I think we're already starting to see that. Um, college football, we talked about it last week the, at the FBS level. 
it's NCAA affiliated, but it's their championship is not NCAA. Yeah. Um, and the, yes, I think the NCAA will be around, but I do think they were uh, they will be making very radical changes. Yeah. Um, about how they, because if if they don't, then these conferences are going to start their own. They're going to do something different. Yep. And and have somebody else govern how they do their things, how they yep. go about their life. Um, the NCAA is still trying to run its business like it's the 1960s mm-hmm. and the 1970s. And that's just not fair. Mm-hmm. It's just not. So, um, I mean, this this thing today is rather small uh, in the grand scheme of things. Um, but at the same time, it's huge because we're I mean, this is education related stuff. This is like the the one little pebble that causes the ripple. Yeah, yeah, get bigger and bigger. Because it doesn't. It, yeah, it doesn't seem like it's that big of a thing, but we're talking at the at the root of what college athletics are is they are athletics. They are student athletes, and the NCAA all this time has been putting a cap on how much money the schools can put towards the, the student athletes for education related things which doesn't hasn't made sense this entire time and yeah. now that's that's going to be able to change yeah um i should have had this pulled up while you were talking but there was something that judge kavanaugh said um and it was he had like a big um uh, a big quote that people were were releasing out and at the very end it was just one sentence the NCAA is not above the law because his whole statement was how in any other business, what the NCAA was doing would be criminal. Yeah. And so at the end, he said the NCAA is not above the law. Um, And I also saw someone else tweet out that if you can have judge Kavanaugh and I think it was Sotomayor, the one of the other judges, if you can have them both on the same page against you, you've done something major wrong. <laughs> yeah. If, if it's not, it, cause it was unanimous. Yeah. It was nine, nothing unanimous decision against the NCAA. So yeah. if you can have all nine judges vote against you, you've really screwed up. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I think it's crazy that it's lasted this long. I really do. Yeah. I just, I can't understand how some of this has, has happened. We've talked about this, you know, the NCAA now several weeks here first with the name image and likeness stuff, and then last week we kind of touched on it with the college football playoff, but it's just, I, I don't know. Yes. I do think they'll still be around in five years, but as I said, I just think it's a lot of things are going to change Yeah, and they don't, they don't really have a choice. They're being, now they're being forced to change. It's not, was it, it's no longer a matter of we need to change or else like it's the, the U S Supreme court is saying you need to get it together. Like this mm-hmm. isn't, this isn't right. Yeah. So I agree. Uh, there are just some organizations out there that seem to think that they are above the law and I'm not going to, to say specifically the NCAA is that, but I'm not also going to say that they aren't. Um, so that's, that's where we will leave that. Um, as I said, between this stuff and the Whitman stuff, there's plenty of more information out there. If you want to go find it, um, it's readily available both at a local and a national level um, for how it affects the U of I, how it affects college sports in general, whatever. Um, but we're just here to kind of touch on the, the bullet points. Um, real quick, before we switch gears totally, uh, you've been keeping up with uh, House of Pain, TBT? Yeah. The bracket came out today. You ready for, some, today. ready for some TBT basketball here in a few weeks? I'm about this close to buying tickets. Cause it's in Bra- it's in you. it's in Bradley it's in, it's in, yeah, it's in it's Peoria, at, correct? Yeah. So I'm I'm real close to buying some tickets, but you yeah, should man. I do, dove 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 into. We did this last week too. <laughs> I know I know I don't know what's right. I'll say them both. Um, oh yeah, I dove dove into things today to look at how things are shaking out. Um, looking pretty good. Looking pretty good for the House of Pain. Um, they got the two seed in their region, uh, and the one seed is the defending champs. So it's going to be tough, going to be tough. But I think I was watching the selection show for the TBT. And um, I 
think they said that that it's the Marquette alumni team is the one seed, the Golden yeah. Eagles or something. Right. And I think that their best player from last year is not coming back. I think Darius Johnson Odom, I think was his name. Um, I don't think he's playing this year. Um, but Illinois added some. They, they added some players. They can. Sure. It's a, I mean, it's a solid team. I yeah. mean, they were already. I mean, I already liked the build last season, and they yeah. brought back most of those guys, if not all of them. And then you add Brandon Paul was the big announcement last week. Yeah. I mean, Brandon Paul was playing in the NBA a couple seasons ago. Yeah. Do you remember Let's not last forget year? that he was on uh, Spurs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. What yeah. What about last year, though? He turned down Illinois. Oh, right. Because yeah. they were like, basically, he was too big for them, I think. Yeah. He wanted to play on this this team with a bunch of other, like, right. former he, NBA guys. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. He wasn't – he played, but yeah. he just wasn't with them. Yeah. They got knocked out, like, two rounds before Illinois did. Yeah. yeah. That that uh, House of Pain, Illinois-based alumni team um, was fun to watch last year. Yeah. Really enjoyed that. Um, and then, yeah. I mean, it was as like I the, said – It was, like, the first thing that came back. Yeah. Right? It really was. It was yeah. Definitely, yeah. Um, and the emergence of Mike Dom. Uh, Dominator. Was, that, was, that was incredible, man. He could play. He could play, yeah. Um, but yeah, that was announced uh, today as well here on Monday. Uh, the bracket was at least we've seen most of the roster. I assume I don't know yeah. if they have any more spots they're still announcing, but I think they've got um, ten. They've got ten filled. I don't remember all the names. I don't have it all in front of me. But as we mentioned, Brandon Paul, um, Ravante Rice, I believe is on the is playing this year. Yep. Uh, Andres Feliz, who really yep. had a really good tournament last year, kind of broke out. He was the um, third leading rebounder in the tournament. Yeah, last yeah, 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 yeah. He's like six yeah. foot. <laughs> right. Uh, so yeah, that's going to be fun. Um, you got the... um, Dimitri McCain. He's playing for oh, this right. year too. Yeah, he, he won it two years ago with the Ohio State team. Right. Um, so he's with Illinois this year. And then I got the roster pulled up here. Okay. J- good. Jalen Tate. Yep. Um, Kipper Nichols. Yep. I haven't heard that name in a couple of years. Um, Nana Egwu and Leron Black as well, who are two yep. big guys. And then and they both they were both on the team last year, I think. Yeah, there are there is one more non Illinois uh, Northwestern guy, Michael yeah. Michael Thompson. I don't right. remember him. So, so it's a ten team, it's a ten player roster right now. Um, I was watching highlights from last year. Um, no Michael Finky, I don't think, um, and okay. no yep. Mal- no Malcolm Hill. Okay. Yep, that makes sense. Um, I don't know if it's a ten player max or if they can or if or if there are more spots or what, but um, they showed highlights during the selection show. And those were two guys I saw last year that have not been announced or aren't okay. playing this year. Okay. So yeah, that's uh, that's something to look forward to the Illinois bracket, as Craig mentioned that he might be attending. Maybe we'll do a live show from there. <laughs> um, they're playing at, uh, at uh, Peoria, is it still called the Peoria Civic Center? Yeah. Um, Carver Arena. July, Carver Arena, July 24th through the 28th um is that is that bracket and then the finals are uh that following week in dayton so um that will cover that um we'll go we'll go nba nba your sons your sons are playing in the western conference finals Mm -hmm. um you excited you ready they're uh already up a game yeah you uh think they can i mean they they swept the nuggets right Surely they're not going to sweep the Clippers. No, no, no. Okay. No. I, no, okay. I don't expect. I just didn't. I, I wanted to see where your confidence level no, was. No, I could see it going seven. Honestly, as good as the game yeah. last night, or uh, yeah, as good as the game Sunday was, um, I could see it going seven. Um, I mean, Suns have Chris Paul out, but the Clippers have Kawhi Leonard out, so that that's kind of a wash. Um, I was really worried right. when Chris Paul went into the protocol because I mean. Without Paul, I was I was just worried because right. the Clippers have Leonard and Paul George, and then it comes out that Leonard is out for an indefinite period of time with a knee injury. So so it's kind of washes out. Um, campaign, former Murray State racer, former Chicago Bull, has just taken the reins and is playing really well. Um, I really like really like the Suns team, um, and I was just thinking this. I think it was when the Clippers fell behind three, two to the jazz or something. And and we, I feel like we, we asked this question every week. 
is Teron Lou a good coach? Like, how does he keep getting jobs? <laughs> <laughs> but then someone tweeted, like, he won a championship with the Cavs, and then he did his whole Lakers thing and kind of did whatever, and now he's with the Clippers and got them to their first Western Conference Finals, like, ever. So I'm like, oh, maybe he, maybe he is okay. But, like, yeah. I was just watching their series. I was like, how does Tyron Lue he, – he's not a good coach. But yeah. um, my big takeaway from the NBA this past week, though, what's with these comebacks? I know. There have been, like, five 20-point comebacks yeah. in the last week. The Hawks had one. I think the, Clipp- the Clippers had one. The Clippers – or the Jazz were up by, like, 30. And I went to bed expecting the series to be over. And I woke up to a notification that the Clippers tied the series at three. I'm like – what the heck happened? There's yeah. been like five of them in the last week. The NBA has, and I'm uh, I'm not like the biggest NBA person. I don't watch it a ton, but even I am not unaware that the NBA has a tendency to play the whole game in the fourth quarter. Yeah, um, that's just kind of how the games go. Yeah, it's just kind of back and forth. You know, occasionally a team will run away with it early, but it's kind of just back and forth for three quarters. And then fourth quarter, it just kind of turns on. Yeah. Um, I think that's just kind of the nature of how that level of that sport works nowadays. Um, so that, I mean, that obviously could be something to do with it, but either way, I mean, it's, it's crazy that that's where we're at right now, but yeah, you're right. It's been several of those, um, those situations. Um, so yeah, the, the, I saw that of the, four teams left so it's clippers spurs hawks bucks Mm -hmm. none of them have won a championship since the merger like 76 yeah and and i tweeted it after the hawks beat the sun or the 76ers sunday night i was like either the bucks or the hawks are going to be playing for an nba title that just that doesn't seem right from a rating standpoint you think the from oh, when we, from the aspect of when we grew up, like we never thought of the Hawks or the Bucks no. as contenders, right? No, never. It just it we were... seems weird, and that's not a knock on them. Like they're both good teams. Trey Young is fabulous. No, absolutely. Giannis is one of the best players in, in the in the world. From a rating standpoint, do you think the NBA likes this? No, this uh, Final Four. I I wouldn't think so. Um, although Atlanta is a huge market, Phoenix. Mm, I mean, it's three meh. huge markets. Yeah, LA is a huge market, LA's but it's also market. the it's the Clippers. Yeah, it's the Clippers. It's not the Lakers. Phoenix yeah. is a good size city. LA is a good size city. Milwaukee is certainly not. Yeah, I mean um, you got you got Giannis and Trey, Devin Booker, Chris Paul, Paul George, Kawhi. So I mean there are a couple names, but you don't have LeBron, you don't have Steph, you don't have Anthony Davis, uh, you don't have Embiid, don't have Kevin Durant, don't have Kevin James Durant Harden or James or Kyrie Harden, Irving. Or Kyrie Irving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you don't have your big three. Like, yeah, uh, the the big stars aren't there, but it's like the next crop because like yeah. Trey Young and Giannis and Devin Booker are all like twenty three or younger, twenty four or younger. Yeah. So, yeah, I agree. It, it could be fun. I I'm watching more now than I was early, and I'm yeah. obviously watching more now than the regular season. I think it's been told here that I don't really watch regular season, um, but. Uh, it's been fun. I I've turned off the blowouts and I wake up and I'm like, what, what year is it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, your sons are up uh, one, nothing in their series. Um, the Eastern conference series won't tip off for a couple days. Um, so yeah, plenty of basketball um, still to play, but uh, so we'll... weird. It's almost July and there's still basketball being played. Well, yeah, and we're still talking about Illinois basketball too. Um, Craig, you I did it. we've we've been on the we've been on the show for about 40 minutes or so, and you have yet to congratulate me. He did it. I did it. <laughs> I the one golfer that you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Play it back. Play it back. Um yeah, so last week we were talking about uh the US Open. And uh, you had went on this whole spiel about all these golfers that uh, were, you know, favorites for the weekend, who was going to play well, who might play well. I'll be honest. I don't know who you talked about, Um, but uh, you asked me on the, you know, at the end, you know, what, who's, who's your prediction? 
to win. And uh, I just said I would love to see a John Rom win strictly for the storyline of what happened the tournament before. Yeah. And Craig, what happened on Sunday uh, when I texted you? What, where, what, what happened? Did, was, was I right? You were correct. You were correct. Now. Thank you. Thank you. He was the favorite. So you didn't go out on a huge limb here. No. <laughs> no limb no limb at all uh it was did you watch you watched yeah because you texted me i was watching at the end a little yeah. bit i mean how awesome was that he birdied yeah. the last two holes um he logan texted me and he said is he gonna do it and i knew exactly what he was talking about and i said <laughs> i said ustazen needs to mess up for it to happen yeah and ustazen hit it in the hit it in the hazard on the last yeah. hole and uh, he messed it up, and yeah. John Rahm walked away with the win. What a story. What what a story. To go from what happened a couple weeks beforehand um, to where he was nearing the end and close to winning the whole thing and being told you have COVID and you have to walk off, and then you just turn around and, and win the next tournament. That's what impresses me the most. I mean, okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he tests positive and they pull in after his Saturday round, um, two weeks prior to the open. And then he shows up at the open. First time he's picked up a club in 10 days, I assume, because he had to quarantine or whatever. And uh, toughest, con- toughest golf conditions in the world. I'm just going to go out and win the U.S. Open my first time back after having COVID. It's incredible. Um I mean, on Father's Day, he just had his first son in April, right before the Masters. His son and his wife were there. His dad was there from Spain. Mom and dad were both there from Spain. So um, really cool moment. Um, He's – I wasn't sure how I felt about him a couple years ago. Um, And if you watch some of the broadcasts, they talked about, you know, he's really had to – I don't want to call him anger issues, but on the course he's very demonstrative and he, he beats himself up a lot and very vocal. And so he's, they've, he's worked on reeling that in. So a couple of years ago, I was like, I don't know if I like this guy. Like he can crush it and he's really good, but I don't know how I feel, but I'm becoming a John Rom fan. I have been for the last couple months, last towards the end of last year, probably um, only the fourth Spaniard to ever win a major. So that's cool for his country. Do you know the last one that won? No, no. Sergio Garcia. Oh, you probably, you probably know that I know name. that name. Yeah. I know that name. Yeah. Um, he won the Masters a couple of years ago. So, yeah, it was fun to watch. And and I'm just proud that we've had this podcast for 18 episodes. We've covered – that. this is our third major. And it only took three tournaments for Logan to get to pick up on golf. <laughs> he, he's he's learning. Proud of myself, man. <laughs> proud of myself. We got the uh, the Open Championship coming up in about three weeks. You gotta, oh, man. You're going to have a pick for that one too. I'm going to wing it. I'm going to wing it. <laughs> wing it and take the favorite. Yeah. whoever whoever it is <laughs> um yeah so you you asked me the other day or i don't know if it was yesterday or you mentioned you wanted to talk about the best of the weekend so was john rom gonna be your best of the weekend no i was gonna throw some shade i forgot about that oh you're gonna throw some shade at me yeah oh about the cubs oh. getting their butt kicked twice in a row to the marlins oh no no oh no oh. it was about a former cub that hit about 20 bombs over the weekend <laughs> I will forever, forever love Kyle Schwarber. Schwarber uh, had yeah. like five home runs in two games. My boy Schwarber, yeah, hit three on one game and two in another. Uh, yeah, that that definitely hurts a little bit. Um, from a baseball perspective, I'm not sure that he is necessarily doing leaps and bounds better than what Jock Peterson is. So, yeah. I mean, it is what it is. It's kind of a wash. But, yeah, that one kind of hurt a little bit. On top of that, yeah, the Cubs did – get their butt kicked twice in a row by the Marlins. They did avoid the sweep, but uh, know, yeah, not, to, not a, not a great weekend for, I ha- for the I had Cubs. To, had the tweet ready. Um, Cubs sweep Cardinals, Cardinals sweep Marlins, Marlins sweep Cubs <laughs> baseball. Uh, yeah. But Cubs, naturally. Cubs avoided that. On yeah. Sunday. That was, that was rough. Um, I, so let me tell you about this. I tweeted about it yesterday. I don't know if you saw it or not, but uh, on Saturday night, 
I had just made a trade in fantasy baseball mm-hmm. and I, I knew this week too. I was going to have an open roster spot. So I'm thinking to myself, what do I need? I probably need a pitcher, but I'm going through all the available guys. And I see the name Wander Franco still sitting available. Um, nobody's picked him up. He's still in triple a. I knew there was a couple guys ahead of him. Mm-hmm. I have this weird premonition to pick him up. I know nothing at this point. And what do I do, Craig? I don't pick him up. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm visiting Allison's grandma and her dad on, da- on uh, Father's Day. And I walk out of the house ready to come home. And I get an alert from ESPN that Wander Franco is being called up. So what do I do? I immediately go to my fantasy baseball app. And my good buddy who I had just done this trade with nine minutes before I got the notification from ESPN. The ESPN notifications are so late. Yeah. Yeah. Like had I been on Twitter at that time? Yeah. I would have already had it, but I was nine minutes late to the party and therefore do not have Wander Franco. So who knows what will happen with that? I also grabbed Jared Kelnick of here weeks ago and he's been terrible. So, I mean, I, when I first started in this league, I was usually really good about getting on the prospects. Um, but my, my friend Mitch has been a little, he's been, he's right on there with me now. He's kind of caught up to, uh, to how Logan plays. So, um, so yeah, I did not go with my premonition that I had that night. I instead decided, I didn't even know what I did instead, but it wasn't Wander Franco. And now he's been called up. I don't know what he's going to do. He might go over 16 and go back to triple a who knows, but um that was my fantasy baseball moment for the weekend so what website do you use to play yeah what service espn okay what are you using now we use yahoo okay um and i haven't we used have, yahoo for baseball in a while we have a roster spot for minor leaguers so yeah, everyone we don't have that yeah everyone in our league has a minor leaguer that they can stash and so obviously someone had him so i didn't even have a chance And then the other league I'm in, we have a full, like, you have a six-person minor league system. So he's been gone for years in that one. So I didn't have a chance for any of them. Yeah. Um, What was your trade? Uh, I need some power. Uh, My team, I'm not doing great. I'm probably not going to make the playoffs, but if I'm going to have, if I'm going to have any sort of a chance, I need Cody Bellinger to come back healthy and I need some pop. So my friend Mitch, who currently has been all season has been carrying Nelson Cruz and Shohei Otani cannot use them both uh, in the DH spot. There's only one utility spot to use. So when Shohei's not on the mound, he can only use one of them. Hmm. So I, I got Nelson Cruz off of them uh, for uh, Gio Urshela and a uh, pitcher, Jose or or something. I don't remember um, from the Astros. So hmm. I needed some power. I have that's, enough. I like, have enough pitchers that I can float in there. I, I have. I'm like last in the league in home runs. So that's a great um, trade for you. You gave up nothing. I know. It's fine. I'm. I'm. <laughs> I'm happy for it. I don't. I will say I don't love um, using DHs in the because I just like yeah. having the flexibility with the utility spot. But like yeah. at this point, I'm not going to have any shot to make the playoffs if I don't start hitting home runs. So yeah, I got somebody that'll hit some home runs. Yeah. So. so what you do? Preseason, um, my our my buddy Aaron Bennett. I'm in a league with him. Yep, um, familiar. He had Shohei Otani, mm-hmm. but he also had Jordan Alvarez. Yeah. So they were both only, and it's uh, this one is a CBS league, and it's not DH. It's utility spot. So they were both only utility. Obviously, right. Shohei was pitcher as well. Um, so he's like, I can't use both of them. Do you like? I was like, I'll take Otani. He's like, I'm like, what do you want? <laughs> So I gave him, I gave him Zach Gallon for Otani straight up. Oh yeah, I remember you telling me about this. So, the <laughs> I accepted the trade, and then I went to Twitter. And then Gallon got hurt. Five minutes before I accepted <laughs> the trade, it had come out that Gallon was hurt, and I promised I him. I was like, I swear, I, I didn't, I did not know, I did not see anything. I just accepted the trade. I did not know. Yeah. Um, Gallon is back. He obviously he's not doing near as well as Otani, but Otani blew up. Right. And he's going to be in the Derby. 
He's going to be in the Derby. I don't like that. I think, I hope he doesn't get hurt. I, as somebody that doesn't own him in fantasy, I love it. But <laughs> right, right. as somebody that like, just for the Derby, I love it. But for the grand scheme of things, I'm not sure that I do. Yeah. But Hey, whatever. We got to enjoy this while it lasts. Cause I'm not right. sure that it's going to last forever. Right. So, um, more power to you, man. Shohei Otani is just a blast to watch. I just wish he wasn't on the West Coast because right. I don't right. see him very often. I don't right. get those games. Um, but uh, he's he is just a blast. I don't like playing with him on the show. I can never no. – he never – on franchise, he's a terrible pitcher. He can hit okay, but he's a terrible pitcher usually for me yeah. when I do franchises with him. But, uh, yeah, so good good for you because he's, he's tearing well, it up. Well – and then in this league, it only takes five, it only takes five games out of position to gain eligibility. And Otani's played five games in the outfield, and Alvarez has played five games in the outfield. So now both okay. the guys have outfield yeah. eligibility. So Aaron could have kept both of them yep. and had a stacked outfield. Yeah. But now I have Shohei Otani. Um, the trade yeah. I made last week, I needed some pitching, so I got um, Kyle Hendricks, Chris Paddock. Sandy Alcantara, Pablo Lopez, and then uh, he threw in George Springer for Blake Snell, who – good riddance, terrible. Um, the guy from the Tigers, Matt Manning just got called up, Robbie Ray, Max Freed, Miguel Jeez. Andujar. Is this a keeper? And, yeah, I sent him three high picks for next year, and he sent me okay. three low picks yeah, that makes for sense. next year. He, he's in like 11th out of 12th. So he was out of it. So I just got a lot of pitching depth. Um, got Hendricks back because I dropped him in my other league. Yeah. Months ago after he gave up eight he, runs and two starts. He's, I dropped he's him. good. He's... Um, so I got him back in the other league. Yeah. So I at least have one share of him. So, yeah. Um, I was going to say Otani went for $2 in our auction draft. What's the $2? Uh, two seventy. The best players are going for like $45. Shohei Otani went for 2 and he's having this kind of a season. So, yeah. I mean, um, Aaron had him. Yeah. I a, spent 40 some dollars on Cody Bellinger and he hasn't been healthy or worth a damn all season. Ugh, so, ooh. Yeah. how does, is that, is that ESPN as well? Yeah. So he's you get one, $270 he's, or yeah. whatever. He's one player there with yes. pitcher and, okay. See, Otani, on, yeah. On Yahoo, he's two separate players. There's Shohei the oh. hitter and Shohei the pitcher oh no ESPN doesn't do that yeah I wish Yahoo didn't I don't have him in that one but in the CBS one that I do have him Aaron drafted him in our minor league draft before he even came to America yeah and so all those guys when you bring them up are 10 cents on a 26 dollar draft day salary that goes up to 32 after the draft okay so 10 cents on a 32 like I got Aaron Otto for five dollars and 50 cents yeah, so I would Otani like to get steel. I would like to get into a more in depth baseball league again. Um, this one is just it's not a keeper league, so it just you know changes every year. Yeah, um, I enjoy doing it, but I now that I'm a little more free from you know that world a little bit, I would like I've, to get more into that. I think I thought about starting up a more dynasty fantasy football league because my yeah, fantasy football I, league we started with started with four keepers. Yeah. And it's down to two now. So baseball, football, or football, football. Yeah. I've done a few of those. Um, that's a long, that'd be a long conversation for a different day, but yeah, I've, yeah. I've done dynasty football leagues. Um, I'm still in one. Yeah. Uh, the other one, I kind of fell apart, but um, you mentioned uh, baseball and you mentioned the name Aaron Bennett. Uh, how's T-ball going? Championship tonight championship tonight it was supposed to be saturday and it rained oh. friday night um so yeah championship monday final still game perfect, of the year still a perfect record perfect record every batter that's come to the plate for us has scored a run that's impressive that's like record setting right that's there. great i'm that is coaching 101 <laughs> from craig show that is beautiful um before we go uh i did want to mention uh new movie that came out this weekend was luca are you familiar with, let me ask you this. Are you familiar with Disney Pixar's Luca? I've seen the commercials. Okay. So you have seen something. Yeah. So here's the thing. I don't know what their marketing plan is right now. Um, granted the pandemic I'm sure has played a part in this, but their choice to 
release some movies onto streaming or into theaters. I don't know how they're making these decisions. Um, I don't think a lot of people are aware of Luca. Um, mm-hmm. It's a Pixar movie. Pixar is the quintessential animation, animation studio of the last 20 years. Uh, and they just dropped a movie on Disney Plus this week that I don't think a lot of people are aware of. Um, it is, I'm assuming you probably didn't watch it. No. Okay. Um, it's good. I do recommend it. It's, um, it's, it's, a, it's very um, more grounded than some of their other stories. Um, Soul was very much, that was a deep movie. Yeah. Uh, Luca is very much not um it's just quick paced and very grounded story um but that dropped on disney plus this weekend it's solid i think i gave it four stars um but uh it's worth a watch but that came out this week um there was a you're probably not familiar with the movie call me by your name do you know what that movie is came out a few years ago with army hammer and timothy chalamet i didn't see it it was one of and to this day i don't know why but it's one of the only movies from that year i didn't see big movies at least um but essentially these movies kind of have the same storyline sort of except like pixar's is like about sea monsters and stuff um but the the new york times art author whoever columnist uh, penned it as calamari by your name um because it's about sea creatures that are like humans on i, I read that before i saw the movie so the entire time i that's all i could think um, about i just kept referring to this movie as calamari by your name yeah. um but it's good. It's it definitely worth worth a watch for anybody that's looking for something to to kill a couple hours. Um, Luca Disney Plus uh, from Pixar. So that was the movie this week. Um, we got we got a few ones coming up. Craig, are we going to have oh, a live watch no for Space Jam? No score. I four. I gave it four. Oh, four. Did, point did I miss now. that? Probably. I probably said it really quickly. But uh, oh, four stars. Okay. Four stars. Ding. Four stars. It's probably the. I mean, it's there's been three good animated movies this year so far. So between that and Mitchell's versus the Machines and Raya the Last Dragon, it's been a pretty good year already for animated movies. So um, our Space Jam uh, live watch party, we're gonna we're gonna do that. That's coming is, up here soon. When is that? I don't remember. In July sometime. We still got a few weeks. We got Black Widow coming up and a few okay. others, but uh, I don't know. Okay. Got to be ready. I did see uh, the the preview for the Tomorrow War. I saw yes. a com- I saw a commercial for it. Yeah, I was yep. like, "Ooh, wait, oh, I think that's on our list." It's on the list. Yeah, yeah it's on the list. It looks it, it, it looks in like that one. I'm like, hmm. Yeah, I don't I don't know a ton about it, um, but it's it's on my list, and it's at least something that I think some people will watch. So that one is coming up here soon. Um, let's see. Yeah. So that's kind of where we stand right now. Um, also coming up here real soon, Big Brother. We're gonna have yeah. A couple are weeks. we gonna have a we're gonna have a weekly segment about Big Brother? Yeah, I mean, I was just thinking this too. We're gonna try and I mean, we've said this from the beginning. We tried to record on Sunday nights. Doesn't always happen. And there's episodes Sunday nights, right? So are we Correct, gonna like yes. go immediately after? Is that the that's not eviction night, is it? No, eviction will be on Thursdays. Thursday, okay. So we'll know so, like we'll know like head of household. We'll know head of household we'll know at that point. Some stuff. Yeah. 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 We'll know head of household and maybe nominees or something. Yeah. Okay. That'd be great for any any of the listeners or viewers out there that are I'm uh, new. I'm still new to the big brother scene. Big brother world. Yeah, man. It's uh it's, it's a like, trip. I think Josh's season was my first one. 18. Josh 19? Martinez? Yeah, 18 or 19. Pots and pans, baby. Oh, I hated him. He's a He's a ball of energy. I hated him. Um, but yeah, excited about that. We're going to have that talk about here in a few weeks too. So um, before we go, anything else that uh, you feel like we need to touch on this week that we that we missed, that we failed to talk about? Any shout outs you want to give? Nothing? Nothing at all? Nothing? Oh, sorry. Crickets? I forgot. I forgot we're audio too. I should probably Crickets? say something. Um, Crickets from Craig. <laughs> I was okay. shaking my head, but that doesn't oh. play well on the radio or Thank on you. the podcast. So. Uh, I saw you uh, spoke to the youth of our generation today. I did. I did. Yeah. Um, the the good folks at the Sports Media Camp for Kids, um, which they host in Danville every year. They didn't host it last year, obviously, with the pandemic. But the, they put that together out at Danville Area Community College. Uh, Mike Colby of Newhoff Media um, has been doing that for 25 years now. Um, it is Gosh. a 
it's a one of a kind experience. I will say so as somebody that attended the camp as a junior high and high school kid, um, you basically, when I was that age, I knew I wasn't going to be an athlete. Um, and I, but I knew I liked sports, so why not talk about them? So I went to a camp at, at the junior college for a week and had a blast. And that's ultimately what led me here. So, um, a long story short, going to that camp as a seventh grader, uh, led me to doing a podcast with you. So, um, no, it, it, that's, that's honestly the truth though. Uh, yeah, but you yeah. know, they asked me to, to speak to them for a little bit as they kick off their week. They usually bring on a former camper of some degree, um, to come on. Um, there are several former campers that are, um, you know, out in the world and, and doing stuff. So that's what I was going to ask um, you who, anybody else that we would know that went to that. Yeah. Um, Austin Berkland, okay. um, Caleb Griffin. Oh, and his brother, Cameron okay. both went, okay. Um, wide receiver slash kicker, wide, Caleb wide receiver slash kicker, Cameron <laughs> Griffin or Caleb. Caleb Griffin. Um, okay. Both of both the, the Griffins went, um, I'm sure there's, there's a few others that you would probably know that yeah. off the top of my head, I'm, I'm blanking on. Um, but, uh, yeah, I went to that for, Basically every year uh, from junior high to high school. And that led me to go into SIU where we met. And that led me to doing stuff out with the dance, which eventually led me to Daytona to South Bend. So honest to God, if I, I mean, going to that camp honestly changed everything about my life. So what's, what's the Daytona team's mascot or nickname that you've worked now for? Now the, the, the Tortugas. Okay. I saw someone wearing a, I think it was their hat. Probably green, green and white, green, with like a blue green bill. turtle turtle. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty. Yeah. I don't know where I was. It had to. I haven't. Were left. you in Daytona? No, no, no. This was this was recently. Okay. Um, I haven't left uh, Champagne for like a couple weeks. Uh, okay. Yeah. So it had yeah, to have been they, around here. But I, I looked. Yeah. I was like, I know that logo. Yep. They are now the Tortugas. They were the Cubs when I was there. Um, but they yeah. are now the Daytona Tortugas. They have a really cool logo though. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's I did that today. I, I zoomed in and chatted with with the group for a little bit today and um kind of talked about you know my career and talked about our podcast so any new listeners out there that are from the sports media camp for kids hey welcome <laughs> hopefully you uh, hey. stick around and join us again next week <laughs> <laughs> awesome all right that's gonna be that's gonna be that for this week uh don't forget to give us a follow on social media no one asks this pod uh, at craig w show at logan the logan lee um or you can send us an email if you want us to talk about something you know no one asks us 20, 2021 at gmail.com don't forget to like subscribe comment share review whatever whatever you do wherever you get your podcast that's going to do it for episode 18 of no one asked us we'll be back next week with another show full of who knows what um but in the meantime you know just keep on living l-i-v-i-n go sons go sons <laughs> Go Cubs. Go Suns. For Craig, I'm Logan. Bye.